Hi guys, this is Mike, and today we're going to look at a very popular and practical task in Bible study, known as a character study. Character studies are incredibly helpful in allowing the student to understand a bit more about the context of a narrative or a particular book of the Bible. So sit back and enjoy as we look at this a bit more in depth. There are many different ways to run a character study on people found in the Bible. In today's screencast, we're going to look at my preferred path using Logos to accomplish this task. This is not the only way to run a character study, or necessarily even the best. However, it is the path that I find to be an effective process for uncovering great data on any character in the Bible. When starting a character study, I'm usually running across a person in the Bible from a particular passage or verse that I'm studying. To begin, Let's open the LEB to Hebrews 5.10. In this verse, the author is talking about the high priestly role of Jesus. It says, Being designated by God, a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. This person Melchizedek is given quite a bit of importance here in the text if Jesus' high priesthood is based upon his. Who is this person Melchizedek, though? When doing a character study, the best place to start is with the primary sources. In this instance, we want to look at all the places in the Bible where this person is referenced. It just so happens that there is an unparalleled way to do this in Logos using a database called the Referent Database. The team at Logos went through and tagged every word or name that refers to a particular person, place, or thing with the precise person, place, or thing it's referring to. We can quickly search all of the reference to Melchizedek by right-clicking on his name in verse 10. In the context menu, scroll down and find the option for person on the right, then select search this resource on the left. This will run a search for all the places in the LEB where the person of Melchizedek is referred to. Notice that references to Melchizedek are few and far between in the Bible. Outside of the book of Hebrews, there are only two other places in the Bible where this person is referenced. As we can see in our search results, these two places are Genesis 14 and Psalm 110. If we look at Genesis 14, we find out a couple things about this person. First, in verse 18, we see that he is a king and a priest. We also see that he was not just any priest, he was a priest of God Most High. This is another way to refer to the God of Abraham or the God of the Bible. Instantly, we see here that Abraham did not hold a monopoly on faith or belief in the God of the Bible. We see in verse 19 that Melchizedek blessed Abraham, and then we see in verse 20 that Abraham gave a tenth of all he had to Melchizedek. Just based upon Genesis' description of Melchizedek and his interaction with Abraham, the father of the faith, Melchizedek is viewed as an extremely important person. According to Hebrews 7.7, 7, without any dispute, the inferior is blessed by the more prominent. So in this instance, Melchizedek is the more prominent, while Abraham is the inferior. But we still do not know a lot about who Melchizedek is. Now that we've looked pretty exhaustively at what the Bible has to say, we can also reference other ancient sources that are extra-biblical or outside of the Bible for further comments about a particular person. One of the best places to do this is the ancient literature section of the Passage Guide. Let's go back to Genesis 14, 18-20, and highlight this passage. Right-click anywhere in the highlighted text and select the option for Reference on the right, followed by Passage Guide on the left. Scroll down to the Ancient Literature section to find all the places where these extra-biblical primary sources reference in some way Genesis 14, 18 through 20. Some really great references we can discover here come from Josephus and the Judaica. In the Judaica, we see a reference from Netarim 3.11g that says, The Holy One, blessed be He, wanted to bring forth the priesthood through Shem. But, because He gave priority when He bestowed His blessing to Abraham over God, He brought the priesthood forth through Abraham. This is giving an argument of how God moved the priesthood from Melchizedek to the line of Abraham. This section out of Netarim 3.11 also provides a very interesting take on Psalm 110.4. If we look at the reference from Josephus, Wars 6.438, we read, But he who first built it was a potent man among the Canaanites, and his 
on our tongue called Melchizedek, the righteous king, for such he really was, on which account he was there the first priest of God, and first built a temple there, and called the city Jerusalem, which was formerly called Salem. Here Josephus references a Jewish tradition that Melchizedek was the founder and builder of the holy city Jerusalem. If sifting through ancient literature is not your preferred method, there's another even more user-friendly way to get to this kind of information. Instead of using the passage guide, go once again to Genesis 14:18 and right-click on the name Melchizedek. In the context menu, select the person option on the right, then factbook on the left. This will launch a factbook report on this biblical person with all kinds of excellent information. In essence, this is an aggregate of everything we have already looked at, including all the reference to this person, along with media images and other helpful information. There's also a section for Bible dictionaries. Go to the Bible dictionary section and open up the Lexham Bible Dictionary to the article on Melchizedek. Bible dictionaries are a phenomenal source of information for character studies. If we scroll down to the section titled Extra Biblical Sources, we'll find interesting references to Melchizedek in the Qumran tradition. Here we find that Melchizedek is transformed from a priest king into a semi-divine being, referring to him at one point as God. But we also see in the Jewish tradition a humanizing of the Melchizedek figure in rabbinic literature. Here we read that the Targums, Midrashim, and Talmud typically identify Melchizedek as Shem, clarifying that he is not the royal messiah. Lastly, when looking for information for building character studies, we can also reference our commentaries. We can go back to our original passage guide on Genesis 14, 18-20 and look at the commentaries section. If we open up the NAC volume on Genesis and scroll down a bit, we'll find an entire excursus on the person of Melchizedek and his role in not only Jewish tradition, but also in early Christian thought. Here once again, we gain similar insight on this biblical person as we have gained from our prior research in ancient literature and in the fact book. We can save all of these findings in our character study in one place using our Favorites tool. Go to the Tools menu and select Favorites. In the Favorites panel, select New Folder and name this new folder Character Studies. We can then add another folder and name this Melchizedek. Drag this new folder into our Character Studies folder to create a subfolder. We can now drag all of our searches and findings into this Character Studies folder. To drag multiple tabbed panels at one time, simply hold down the Shift key and drag the panels and drop them into the folder of our choice. Once we've dragged all of the panels into the Favorites folder that we want to store, we can access these again by clicking on the link in the folder. It will open the resource or tool to the exact place that we dragged it into the folder originally. I hope that this screencast has been helpful in showing you some of the possibilities on using Logos for the purpose of doing character studies. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. If you want to know about new videos as they're released, subscribe to the channel here. As always, enjoy mining the depths of the scriptures using Logos. Until next time.